Hi, everyone. My name is Gal Oshri, and I'm a product manager on the TensorFlow team. I'm here to talk to you about collabor collaborative machine learning with TensorBoard.dev. Machine learning often involves collaboration, where you exchange ideas with the team, post questions on Stack Overflow, share your code on GitHub, and publish your findings to the broader research community through papers and conferences. In all of these, there's something you're expressing about what you've done, potentially through visualizations. For example, it is common to share experiment results and papers through various charts. But it is also common to include this type of information when asking for troubleshooting help. In this case, someone posted an issue on GitHub asking why they're not achieving the expected results alongside a screenshot of their tensor board to explain why they're, what's, what's going wrong. The problem is that pictures don't convey all the information. For example, you might want to show what other metrics are being tracked, how many trials were run, or let the reader explore the model structure in more depth. Even when the code is released, it can require quite a bit of setup before the results can be viewed. So how can we make this easier? Well, we already have TensorBoard, which is TensorFlow's visualization toolkit. It is commonly used by researchers and engineers to understand their experiment results. It lets them track metrics, visualize their model, explore model parameters, view their embeddings, and a lot more. And we're consistently adding new capabilities to it. Last year, we launched the HPRAMS dashboard to help visualize hyperparameter tuning results. This can help you identify which hyperparameters are most promising for further exploration. Given that mo many people are already using TensorBoard, and some are even sharing screenshots of it, we launched TensorBoard.dev to make all of this easier. With TensorBoard.dev, you can upload your experiment results and get a link that can be shared with everyone for free. Others can view and interact with your TensorBoard with no setup or installation. We started with the Scalers dashboard, but more dashboards will be added soon. We're only at the beginning of this journey, and we want to continue evolving this to help drive state-of-the-art research. As inspiration, I want to share a few awesome examples with you today. The TensorFlow slash models repository on GitHub provides a collection of officially supported TensorFlow models on cloud TPUs. Many of them now provide a link to tensorboard.dev. This allows you to quickly view the training dynamics and gives you a point of reference if you're training the model yourself and trying to understand if something is going wrong. In this example, Sean is using Twitter to share some work on large-scale ML experimentation. Tensorboard.dev is used to help tell that story more effectively. This team of researchers at Google recently published a paper on optimizer grafting to help better understand optimizer performance. Along with the paper, they've also uploaded results to tensorboard.dev to show 550 grafting curves that help illustrate their technique. This would be difficult to convey purely in a paper. Another project from Google Research introduces Big Transfer, a recipe for scaling up image-based general visual representation learning. By transferring using a simple heuristic, they achieve state-of-the-art results across multiple vision tasks. They uploaded their results to tensorboard.dev to show how their model's performance reaches state-of-the-art and compares with the baseline across multiple data sets. This paper from Europe's 2019 discusses binarized neural networks. Their GitHub repository includes several links to tensorboard.dev to illustrate model accuracy. But what's really cool is that as part of the Neuro3 reproducibility challenge, another group of researchers published a report on this paper. In this report, they included links to tensorboard.dev as well to provide a more complete picture of the training process and include other useful information to help others with debugging. So all of this sounds great, but how do you get started? You continue using TensorBoard in the same way that you use it today. In this example, the TensorBoard Keras callback is shown but there are other APIs that can be used. If you're not familiar with TensorBoard, check out tensorflow.org slash tensorboard for some great Colab tutorials. You can upload these logs with the tensorboard dev upload command and provided the log directory. Just last week, we enabled optionally adding a name and description to your experiments to provide more context to those that view it. This can include links to your paper, GitHub repo, or simply point out what is really interesting about your results. You'll get a link to your TensorBoard that you can immediately view, even if your experiment is still in progress. Finally, you can share the experiment 
by copying the URL or using the share button in the top right. As I mentioned, we'll be adding more of TensorBoard's dashboards over time, as well as enabling more collaboration capabilities. You can learn more at tensorboard.dev and follow a simple example to get started. Thank you for your time. And next up is Julia to tell you about Kaggle with TensorFlow 2.